You know, one of the things that humans have been universally very, very good at is killing each other. Hey, how you doing? I'm Van. Welcome back to the channel. I have been uh, suffering from my allergies of, uh, pr pretty extensively over the last few days. <coughs> and right now, I'm, I'm not really able to sleep. So, I decided to make a video about dying. Because historically, humans have loved to just kill each other. I know YouTube doesn't like that word, but historically, it's, it's a part of life. It's a part of human nature. And another part of human nature is boredom. And with boredom comes creativity. One of the very few entertaining things you have to do in your life is rock crushing or just pushing your buddy into a cliff. You're going to find creative and fun ways to push your buddy into a cliff. And then eventually it's going to turn into a sport. But not right now. Now you're just creatively killing. So we're going to go through some historically pretty creative ways that people were executed. Primarily, we're actually focusing on executions that we have literal documentation of being done to people for one reason or another. There are a few that are a little mythological, but I'll, I'll talk about those when we get there. I know I could probably find individual accounts of specific, like, murders that are weirder, but again, these are executions we're talking about here. Also, if you're new, which you probably are, subscribe. I would, I would greatly appreciate that. I, I'm just trying to hit a thousand by the end of the year. I think I can do it. I hope I can do it. It's, it's the only goal I've got right now, but once I get there, I'll make another one. And maybe <laughs> we'll see. I subscribe. We're going to start with an honorable mention. I'm a keel haul. Yeah. Is something that I think a lot of pirates say in a lot of TV shows and most kids and most adults don't really know what that means. I didn't actually know what that meant until like a year ago. Keel hauling is the act of tying somebody up and throwing them off the side of a still moving ship so they go underneath the keel and whenever that happens they uh, either drown bump their head a lot and die of concussion just generally have a very bad time and end up maimed and cut up from all the barnacles all over the bottom of the boat or the seafloor depending on how shallow the water is in truth though keel hauling was probably rarely used as something that was fatal. It was mostly done as a type of corporal punishment. They probably, <clears throat> let me try that word again. It was mostly done as a type of corporal punishment for particularly troublesome passengers or sailors. Likely they just kind of threw them over, let them flounder for a little while and then dragged them back in and asked them if they learned their lesson. <coughs> Which is why it's only an honorable mention. It's a Mazateo. Mazateo? Mazateo! Fucking bumpkin. Mazateo, or however the fuck you're supposed to actually say it. I didn't really, like, do research. I'm very sorry. This was a type of execution that was favored strongly by papal states. Places that were governed essentially by the Vatican or the Pope. And the actual act of Mazateo was, uh... Mazateo? God damn. Was reserved primarily for the worst offenders. What was it, you ask? What was that thing that I keep pronouncing like an idiot uh it was hitting them real hard in the head with a hammer or mallet like a looney tune skit you just bonk hit them real good one good time and uh it typically doesn't kill them it's typically not like a mallet mallet like not like an oversized cartoon mallet but like a mace or like a hammer and while it may kill immediately most of the time it doesn't and um there are two options the one that I know of that is documented and it's the thing you're supposed to do is you're supposed to slit the throat of the person whose head you bonk. However, I imagine there are some cases where uh, that probably didn't happen and the executioner just kept bonking like it was like a thing to do, you know? Demnatio ad bestias? Again, I'm a hick, I'm sorry. Death by animal. And primarily we're focusing on the Roman form of it, but there's one specifically later on that we're going to talk about. But right now this is... Roman. Think Colosseum. Think lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. But genuinely, all of these animals were there. They were imported from other places for this exact purpose. The Romans loved their blood sport. They would starve these animals or train them in order to actually fight people. Typically, starving was easier, but you get a weaker animal. From this point going forward, assume that all of these executions are done publicly. Because again, when people are bored, death is entertaining. Just think of how much more bored they were back in the day, man. Like, they didn't even have electricity. Christians were usually fed to animals. Treasonous people or mutinous soldiers were also some that were typically thrown into the lot. Oh, also, at one point uh, in the Roman Empire, there was um, a period where they would feed 
a particular type of criminal to animals. And these individuals were people who employed sorcerers to directly harm another. Not the sorcerer. Not if you employed the sorcerer for good. Just if you buy evil sorcery, you will be fed to a lion. It's interesting how specific that is. Uh, number 10, probably the most famous form of execution that you've ever heard of, and certainly the most famous form that I've ever heard of, uh, the crucifixion. We have the Crucifixion fan club all over the world. There are billions of them. But Crucifixion itself is uh, pretty brutal, to be perfectly honest. Of course, everybody's probably seen Passion of the Christ. I don't know. That's an old movie now. I'm old. I, I forget that. I'm 30. Crucifixion is still a popular form of execution to be shown on the media. On the media. Uh, God, I am old. But there's a particular type of showiness that goes along with a crucifixion, that's kind of hard to look over. Even beyond seeing Jesus being crucified, seeing anyone crucified on a, on just, just, yeah, you got me. You're picturing it. You see it in your mind's eye. Especially because crucifixion takes a long time to kill somebody. And I'm not, I'm not talking like a day or two. I'm, I'm talking like six days. Six days somebody can be up on that crucifix slowly dying. And in general, there's a not really strong consensus as to what kills somebody when they're crucified, other than general trauma or shock or whatever else, you know? But in theory, a healthy person just could be fed and watered for a long time and just have to sit up there. And that would be ter that'd be the worst fate. That'd be terrible. Not the worst fate. We got some more coming up, but it's food for thought. So you may be asking yourself, then, what if we took crucifixion, and we made it real simple, and we made it real, real invasive, and then you have impalement, and impalement is awful, it's terrible, it's no good, and it's very bad, and it's also one of the oldest forms of execution we have record of, uh, dating back to, I think, 1800 BCE, hang, hang on, 18th century BCE, I was close, I, my approximation of my notes was good, but impalement goes through, and it may pierce or, like, kind of mess up the organs, but it doesn't really do all that much damage going through other than stretching everything out. When it exits, you, you're alive, and you're alive for a while. Like, I'm talking an uncomfortable amount of time. Again, several days has been recorded in some cases. And then you hear uh, probably semi-fictional accounts of Vlad the Impaler, and you just have to imagine the literal horror that that has to be. That is the scariest possible sight any person could have witnessed, were it genuine. And even if it wasn't, even if it was only like a few hundred or a couple thousand, that's still too many. One's too many. Coming up next, we have the Blood Eagle, and uh, disclaimer, this is one of those that may or may not be kind of made up. The Blood Eagle itself is likely steeped in poetic allegory, lost in translation through an old scaldic like linguistic thing we don't really have a direct understanding of if this is a literal thing that they're trying to say a literal thing that is done to people or if it is just allegory for some political shit that was going on with the scalds at the time i don't, I don't know but the act of a blood eagle is opening the back and severing the spine then moving like removing the lungs from the back and flipping them over in order to like you know be like a blood eagle like and then just leaving them there i guess until they expire which i can't imagine would be a long time and that's really it we don't really have anything else to go on with that one uh every ancient civilization is notorious for not writing a whole lot down mostly because they didn't have a whole lot of writing utensils they didn't have pens and paper yeah stop judging them for that <laughs> Flaying is something I think people take for granted nowadays, which is a sentence, for sure. One of the most atrocious things I can imagine anyone going through. When I get a paper cut, I want to cry. I can't imagine the feeling of not having skin on my body. The ancient Assyrians, I think in the 16th century BCE, took pride in their ability to flay their captives while they were still alive. Uh, there are other records, of course, of like people's faces being peeled off and torture. Just the concept of taking the time to slowly do that. I'm going to quote something here. It's, it's, it's brutal, but like, if you play Mortal Kombat, you've probably seen worse. But just think, this is something that really happened. Their flayed corpses hung on stakes 
and their skins were used to adorn the city walls. It's an actual quote. It's a thing that supposedly actually happened. Also, of course, the Aztecs skinned people in the name of their flayed god. Um, the Aztecs pretty much did m most likely all of these in some form or fashion at some point. You know, special mention to this one just because it is uh, particularly brutal, and one that the Aztecs actually did a lot. I believe there was an emperor who, like, flayed his competitor or something like that. Like, it was, like, a really dark story. If I can find anything, I'll post about it. I'll, I'll post it somewhere. Okay, so this is another one that I think that a lot of people hear and don't really know what it is. Because as a child, I definitely didn't know what it meant to be drawn and quartered. They say it in history class, and you're just like, okay, what what does that mean? Oh, they were pulled apart with horses. Well, that's already not fun. That's that's already very, very brutal and pretty scary. It feels like we're missing a couple of steps, doesn't it? Now, before I go into this, keep in mind that being drawn and quartered was something that was reserved almost exclusively for males convicted of high treason. So it was not something that was supposed to happen very often. And again, this is public. I think everything other than, like, flaying was public, but the results of the flaying were public, so... You get it. Either way, I get points, right? So, to be drawn and quartered actually uh, means to be drawn, hanged, castrated, disemboweled, beheaded, and then quartered. Where where do you draw the line at, okay, maybe, maybe that's a little excessive. Where do you think, okay, well, we have done enough, I think. Um, and also, keep in mind, to be drawn and quartered means you were typically bound to, like, a wooden pallet and dragged to the site of your execution, sometimes naked. So that's, that's another fun little bit. The point was to make a point. The point is the show. It's to show everybody not to do this. By the way, uh, women who were, uh, executed for high treason were burned at the stake, which is also terrible for those that, uh, don't know this fact. The fire isn't what kills you, it's the smoke inhalation, and you typically uh, just suffer in pain from your legs burning until you pass out from the smoke inhalation. Like, it's 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 awful. All, dying's bad, guys. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. Blowing from a gun is a term that I actually didn't know that this is what it was called until, like, I was looking it up for the video. But blowing from a gun is a form of execution that was employed widely by the British during the periods in which they occupied India and Pakistan. And to be blown from the gun, you would be tied to a cannon, and then the cannon would be fired, with you point blank in front of the cannon. It was either a blank or grape shot, but either way, it was enough force to completely eradicate the body in question. Ongoers, or, or onlookers rather, would report heads flying as, as high up as like 40 feet. And they would do these in mass, too. Like, they'd have them lined up. And what makes this even more fucked up, what, what makes this even more of a thing that makes you really realize the extent of just how evil people can be, is they were executed this way not because of convenience, not because they had a lot of cannons. That helped. It helped to have a lot of cannons if you're going to execute somebody by cannon. By destroying the body, by desecrating the corpse, it essentially guaranteed that by the doctrine of these individuals' own religions, they could not get into their heaven. They were desecrating their corpses in a way that prevented them from reaching their own holy land. And that's fucked up. The breaking wheel was something I thought that I knew what it was going to be whenever I heard the name breaking wheel, but it turns out that I'm an imbecile, because I assumed it was going to be that thing, like, that you would, like, you know, there'd be a body on it, and you'd, like, spin the wheel, and it pull them and, like, pull them apart like that. I'm very tired. It's, like, 1 a.m. But the braking wheel was quite literally just a big-ass wheel that some dude, maybe doing, like, a play or, like, a skit or something, too, fun stuff, would beat you in a way that was choreographed. Let's go through it. He would break your legs he, by smashing this giant, typically iron-studded wagon spoke wheel on your legs. He'd do it one time for each spoke on the wheel, slowly to make sure you suffer. Then your arms, then your pelvis, and so on and so forth. The arms and legs would be broken to such a point that the executioner would wire your arms and legs, like, through the spokes of the wheel. And just beat you some more! <laughs> <laughs> done publicly in front of a lot of people. Watching a man suffer and, like, scream and cry and, and just die in the most 
just animalistic beat you to death way you can while also trying to turn it into an art like i get it it's avant-garde but it's a little a little too avant-garde i think guys so i mentioned earlier that the romans were not the only ones to employ animals whenever it came to execution and of course they're not it, animals are brutal they're violent they're bestial and they're scary we have an inherent fear of them meaning if we can get them to kill somebody we're gonna try to do it and it turns out that we can train elephants to kill death by elephant was something that was done largely in places where elephants are, such as India, uh, Pakistan, and likely parts of Africa. I don't remember. I think so. But in India specifically, it was pretty widespread. Like, it was something that the rich or the powerful would do to execute their enemies to essentially show that they had power over these gigantic war beasts. What makes it interesting to me is that elephants in this particular case right here, where they were being used as executioners. These elephants could be trained to torture their captives and keep them alive for a long time. Uh, and we're not talking like days, we're talking a few minutes probably, but much longer than they should be while the elephant is just beating them to death somehow. It doesn't matter how, the elephant's gonna beat you to death. It could breathe on you and probably kill you eventually. Roman Carthage would also employ elephant execution, likely gladiatorial arenas and stuff like that. Also just for the show of it. I can't imagine showing up to my execution they pull the curtain back and there's an elephant who walks in sharpening a scalpel and he's just like hello boy and he just starts cutting like i it's a nightmare it's like zootopia the brazen bull is fun to me it's a fun idea it's 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 a way to make execution fun again we're gonna kind of fly through this one just because i know you've heard of this if you're watching this video and you've gotten this far you've heard of this and you were waiting for it because it is weird it is unique but it's also been all over the internet brazen bull would essentially just be a big bronze bull that had a bunch of gears and me mechanisms, but it had a heating element beneath it, probably a fire. Whoever was being executed by the bull would be inserted into the bull, and the latch would be closed. It would then be heated up, and they would just be cooked alive. Now, because of the inner workings of the bull, steam from the evaporation of the person's, like, bodily fluids would shoot from the bull's nose. The screams of the person inside would go out of the bellows of the bull to make it sound like a bull, like, screaming. Stuff like that, you know, real fun stuff. Uh, these weren't really widespread, though. I think we only have actual records of maybe one of them. And even that, I think, is kind of mixed up in story and myth. But it's still something that's fun to, like, think about. Fun. You know what? Executions are fun. So last on the list, and again, keep in mind this is creativity, and I don't really know if you can get more creative than this, if it's a real form of execution. Probably made up at least a little bit. But the form of execution in question is known as scaphism, which literally translates to the boats. So scaphism was allegedly used by the ancient Persians as a form of execution for particularly egregious uh, crimes. Not really sure what, probably the bad ones like murder and treason and stuff. Maybe theft. To be scaphized, you would be taken to a shallow water marshland and you would be tied up and sandwiched between two custom-made small boats. These boats would float just enough to where you would be kind of touching the water because your arms, legs, and head would be left out. You would then be covered in milk and honey, like absolutely just covered, just filled with it and everything. You would be force-fed milk, honey, cream, sweets, whatever else, until you literally were like throwing up on yourself. Uh, your body would be covered also, by the way, just FYI, and you would be left there. So what kills you, you may ask? Why can't you get out? Well, the boats are very secure, apparently. They're very tough things. Um, and your other option is flipping over and drowning, which I would probably go for if I could manage it. Because what ends up killing you is the amount of vermin and parasites that end up coming after the milk and honey, and then burrow inside of you. Then you pee and poop and all of that stuff inside of the boats, and then more vermin are attracted to that, and over the course of probably a couple of days, uh, you are slowly eaten alive. And that's the note we're ending the video on. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you watched all the way to the end, I, I, you're the best. Like, literally, nobody loves you as much as I do in exactly this moment right here. That moment's gone now. It's on to the next person. But it was fun while it lasted, right? Please subscribe. I'm trying to hit that thousand. Um, the summer's just kicking my fucking butt, dude. Like, it's, it's hot.
and there's like an ecosystem of flies and mosquitoes like right outside my backyard. It's terrible. I can't go out there anymore. It, it scares me. <sighs> but yeah, y'all have a great rest of your night.